Hi, you're watching Saturday in the Woodworking Shop with Andrew Pitts, where we talk things woodworking. In the last episode about this job, uh, I had installed these plugs uh, after putting screws through to hold these legs in place. And I'll give you a link here that you can go back if you missed that episode and catch up. But right now I'm just going to go ahead and use a nice sharp chisel just to chisel off these, these plugs. I can't really get a saw in there. Normally I'd use a flush cut saw, but I can't fit that, so I'm just going to have to carefully chisel. There we go. Nice. Now I'm going to have to tell what finish I have here so I know how to fix it. So uh, first thing I'll do is check if it's uh, shellac. Anything built before 1920 or so is likely shellac because lacquer wasn't around then. So just take a little bit of denatured alcohol, which is the solvent for shellac. Just put a little dab of it in a place that's inconspicuous. Let it sit for a a little bit and see if it gets sticky. If it does, then you got shellac. If it doesn't, then you got something else. Probably lacquer. It does look like it's dissolving. It feels sticky. It has that shellac smell to it. So we're dealing with shellac here. The other test would be to use lacquer thinner. A lacquer thinner will dissolve the lacquer, but the denatured alcohol won't dissolve the lacquer. So first check with the alcohol. If that doesn't work, if that doesn't soften the finish, then try some lacquer thinner. I think lacquer thinner will dissolve shellac, so don't start with the lacquer thinner. I think lacquer thinner dissolves anything. Now that we know what finish we have, let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit because it's got a lot of grime and old wax and stuff on it. So I've got the uh, a little bit of uh, paint thinner here. I like to use paint thinner. It doesn't affect uh, it doesn't affect the shellac or lacquer. Actually, it really doesn't affect anything, but it does get grease and grime and wax off. Because I'm going to go ahead and do a little refinishing on this thing after I repair the stained areas. Maybe you can see what I'm getting off of this. Really takes the grime off. Now I'm touching this up with a little aniline dye stain. I'm using the color that they call mahogany, since that's what this is. And we'll see how it works out. The nice thing about aniline dyes are water-based, so if you don't like the color, just put on another color of water based and they dissolve into each other and you can sit here all day and modify the coloration. Although I'd say it's a little easier to get things darker than lighter so probably best to start out with the lighter color and work your way down to the darker. If you've never used aniline dyes all you do is you take this dye powder and you mix it in warm water and uh, once it's all dissolved, you've got, you got your color. And you can mix the colors. You can really do whatever you want. And uh, really easy to do. And it lasts a long time. I've got bottles I've mixed up years ago. And just whenever I need the color, I just grab it. Okay, I let this stain dry overnight. And I've zoomed in close. And maybe you can see that it's a little too red. So I've mixed up a little bit of brown aniline dye. And uh, I'll just go right over the red, and the two will end up mixing together. And we'll darken it some, and we'll see how that goes. After fixing these legs, it's a little wobbly. So I went ahead and put a piece of blue tape on the legs where I needed to take a little bit off. And I discovered on this leg, it's been shimmed up. So I think if I can just remove this leg and remove a shim or two, I'll be in good shape. After a repair, I just like to come along, just give the whole thing a wash coat. 
which makes it look a lot better. My client's looking for a table that has four legs to sit on the floor, not a restored antique. So you've got to be uh, a little bit judicious in the amount of time you can spend uh, based on the budget. So uh, what I found is uh, I can use these little marking, uh, they're called ultra marks from Mohawk, to kind of touch up places where the color didn't come out exactly right. These are a shellac based product and so uh, I'm using a little shellac to kind of loosen up the tip because I don't use these too often. But there's some color in here and I can just go ahead and spread a little bit of that over where the dowels are, blend it in with with a finger and end up with a piece where the color is uniform. And now for something just a little bit lighter. I get a lot of people coming to tour my workshop but one of the things they're always stuck struck with is my beer bottle collection. It's pretty sizable. You can see I've taken on all my walls in my office slash finishing room I have beer bottles. Hopefully no two the same. You back up here a little bit and see so get that fourth wall in because it's got a lot of bottles on it. You zoom out a little bit. I don't know how many bottles I have in this room. I don't know 700 maybe but I ran out of space so I had to come into my storeroom flip on that light and first I filled up this wall and then I came over and I filled up this other wall and I still have some beer bottles there on the floor that I still have to install as long as they keep making new breweries I'm going to keep collecting new beer bottles this all started about 1994 when I was on my destroyer and we were in the Mediterranean. Made a port call after doing a long deployment in the Red Sea. And uh, I can't remember where we pulled in, but uh, I noticed, let's see if I can get that, this beer bottle here with the green face on it. And I thought, I thought that really looks unique. I've never seen anything like that before, so I kept it. And I decided to go ahead and keep all the rest of the beer bottles from that deployment. So I've got some from France and Italy. I remember getting this one here. I think that was France. And uh, then when I got home, I just kept saving them. And, uh, of course, you know, the, the, the microbrewery rage started around then. So now I probably have over a thousand beer bottles. So when I die, my kids are going to have a great time trying to figure out what to do with all this. It'll probably be about 100 runs to the recycling place. <laughs> I forgot to mention that to be eligible for my beer bottle collection, I have to personally drink the beer. So here's looking at you. Mm -hmm.